everyone. Welcome to Hudson Valley Knits. I am Amy, your host, um, and this is episode 64. I am in my home today. I usually try and um, podcast outside, and I have meant to, and I actually, I swear to you, I brought all my stuff up to my parents' house this past weekend, Mother's Day weekend, as I went up to see my mom, and I was going to podcast up there, but I was so sick on Sunday, and even yesterday I actually called in sick to work. Um, so I'm really much better now. Um, and I just, I wanted to get something out. So I worked from home today, so it's kind of easier for me to podcast or slip, or slip a recording in after work um, because I'm not getting home at like 7.30, 8 o'clock, which is kind of the norm lately. Um so yeah, uh, it's been a incredibly busy three weeks for me, um, uh, but not that much knitting. So last time I talked to you, I think I was down by the river, and um, I was telling you that I would be going to a uh, tarot conference. Once I did, but I actually um, had uh, I was there from Thursday to Sunday and. Um, do any knitting. Nope. So uh, it might feel like there's not much to show you, but I have been really busy with knitting too. I just don't have a lot to show for it. So um, let's get to it. Um, before I go on, if you are new to my podcast, I really appreciate you checking me out. And um, if you're one of my diehard fans, thanks for coming back. I, I do appreciate it. I love sharing my knitting with everyone. Um, uh, I know I've mentioned this before, but really the reason I started a video was not a video podcast. I didn't really, um, when I first started, I didn't really know that there were video podcasts for knitting. I had never explored that. Um, what I was doing was I was trying to get out of typing my blog I I really um I'm not a I'm not the best I just feel like I don't write things in such a way that it does them justice especially kind of knitting um and so I I consider I guess I considered myself a boring writer but talking about my knitting could be pretty fun and interesting so I said well it would be cool if I could record myself and I could just upload it right up to um, iTunes or YouTube rather and then link it in my blog. And that's what I did the first few times and then I discovered podcasts and everybody was doing it on Blip at the, it was Blip at the time. And it was right before they just started dumping people off of Blip. So I did it on YouTube for a while because I, I wasn't going to pay to upload videos. But I ended up investing in um, WordPress and it paying for like the extended pa uh, package and started uploading it. And I became, instead of a vlog, I became a podcast. Um, so, and like, and like I said, it was really all just to be able to talk about my knitting, right, um, and spinning. At first, I wasn't spinning back then, though. Um, I wanted to say a couple of things. I um, It's the middle of the year, and I just want to put a little reminder out there that I have a senior love along. It's a year-long kind of knitter. It's a year-long craft along where I am asking people to donate gifts that I would give out at the end of the year in the holiday season to um, our senior veterans residing in the um, Veterans Nursing Home in Montrose, New York. I've done it twice, and this will be my third year. I used to be collecting just washcloths, and they're, very, they're still very welcome, crocheted, um, knit, whatever, but uh, you can um, put them together any way you want. You can weave them too, but they have to be 100% cotton per the request of the nursing home. Um, but what I decided to do this year 
Let's open it up to any type of holiday gift that you'd like to craft. Um, one of the things that I like, like, I'm not saying you should go and make these, but I just, I wanted to open it up to be more creative. So, like, for instance, my mom makes these. My mom, um, she delivers Meals on Wheels to um, elderly people that are shut-ins, that can't leave their homes. And every year she collects milkweed pods, acorns, <laughs> um, um, pine cones, and golf tees and makes these for the shut-ins. So um, you can crochet or knit a snowflake ornament. You can felt something, make it out of wood. You can do whatever you want. Um, as long as it's kind of small, right? So, um, that being said, I just wanted to put a reminder out there. So, um, I also have a fun thing called a 2016 Goals Contest, which is kind of late in the year now to start. But you could still join in the chat thread and share what you've accomplished during the year that's kind of in line with any goals that you might have set. Um... So, yeah, that's kind of all the announcement kind of talks. Um, so I guess let's get right to it. I, I Like I said, I feel like I don't have a lot to show, but I have been working hard. And I'll probably talk a lot at the end about the um, design along, the Shirley Patton design along that I've been um, participating in. Uh, we just completed a big milestone. So... After this podcast, you know, the next podcast I'm following, you'll probably see my um, idea come to life because I'll be starting to knit it soon. Um, that being said, uh, my first whip is my Hermione's Everyday Socks. I showed you last week I had finished the first one and just started this one. I think it was a little past the cuff. Here's the first one. And uh, I can't find my damn sock blockers. I have no idea where they are. Um, this is Never Enough Time Sock Yarn in the Dahlia colorway. It's an Etsy shop. I don't have her card. Here's the, um, she sells um, a two color um, um, set that has a little skin for cups and heels. Here's her label. Really love her yarn. I actually bought a couple of skeins from her. She had a Mother's Day sale. Uh, never enough time. Uh, I don't see a... Never enough time at gmail.com. So oh, yeah. So there's her Etsy um, uh, email address right there, right? Uh, so highly, highly recommend. Um, she does coupons every now and then. And I found her on Facebook. There's a Facebook group called um, Sock Knitters Anonymous. Addicted to Sock Knitting. After a, a Sock Knitting magazine. And she posts there on Wednesday. Uh, retailers are allowed to post um, stuff they're work uh, promote their goods. And that's how I found her. So um, that's my sock. Uh, let me show you what else I'm working on. I have a new thing on the needles. All right, let me show you my old thing on the needles. My Lazy Days of Summer shawl. I, um, I was not very far when I last showed it to you, but I am actually working on the last part, the last clue. Um, this is a great relaxing knit. Um, the rest, it just follows the same um, eight row repeat. And I just really love it. I love art yarns. You can see this, let me see if you can see the beautiful greenish blues and the sparkliness. Beautiful colors. Love, love, love. So it's Merino Cloud, which is like a fingering white, um, luxurious Merino. And um, silk and sequins. Silk, uh, beaded silk and sequins. And the same colorway. 
and it's more like that. It's like a more of a greenish blue. Um, and it was a gift. Both of these skeins were a gift from my sister for Christmas this past Christmas. And I'm just, it's just, you know what? I do it when I'm watching Dancing with the Stars last night. I did a couple of repeats and I just do it like that. Really, really lovely. Um, uh, Iris, who owns Art Yarns, and her last name is escaping me. Let me see if it's on the uh, patterns. Irish Schreier is the owner of Art Yarns, and she really um, she does some fantastic, simple yet fantastic um, patterns that really show off her yarns. And her yarns are extremely luxurious and soft. They're very high end. Um, they're worth the money that she charges for them. They are kind of expensive. Not everybody can afford them, at, um, but if you can as a special treat, I recommend treating yourself to some art yarns. Um, really is um, a gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. And really, you'll love knitting with it. Um, so that's something you know about. There are two projects that I was working on, Flight of Color. I finished that that right wing, but that's in um, hibernation for a little while because I'm kind of getting ready to start my design along sweater, so I wanted to focus completely on that. And the other thing is the Yarn Fairies in My Garden uh, pie shawl. Not pie shawl, it's square. I keep saying pie shawl, but it's square. Um, that huge shawl um, is in hibernation for a little while as well because I have cast on, da -da -da. I think I showed you the swatch last week. I might have had a little done. I don't think so, but I am working on a new sweater pattern by um, Laura Nelkin called La Hefa. J-E-F-A, Effa, I think it's pronounced. And it is, I'm trying to find the cover page so you can see the picture. Um, I didn't, you know what, I didn't print out the pages with the pictures because, oh no, here's one, that's the pictures. I did, I did. Usually I don't because I don't want to use up the ink, but yeah. And see, kind of, the, oops, sorry, I'm going the wrong way. Kind of the lace pattern up the sleeves. It's a lace sweater, and um, it's all solid lace. And she knit it in um, Spirit Trail Fiberworks Nona, which is a 50% um, merino, 25% silk, 25% cas cashmere light fingering weight or some say heavy lace weight. I think it's um, described as heavy lace weight by the dyer. And I have com completed three repeats. Three repeats. I'm just starting my fourth repeat of the sleeve chart um, in this beautiful one of a kind colorway. Um, I chose one of the test knitters knitted it with beads. <laughs> it's like go all or broke, um, but I'm knitting it with beads. Can you see that? Um, it really looks lovely with the beads. And here's like the center pattern. And the two edges are identical. So this is one of the sleeves and I'm like, Totally loving it, but this little piece, this little three repeats because of the beads, takes forever. It takes forever. She said her test knitters knit it in about a month. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. So I have three skeins of the Nona. It's supposed to be enough. Here's the yarn. Love it. I am using... Um, Aqua beads. Oh, uh, I don't think I have it. Yeah. So I am using um, eight millimeter beads. Um, Capri Blue, Mayuki seed beads. 
I bought 125 grams, which will be more than enough. I think she said she used 2,500 um, beads in her project. Should be plenty. They're they're really beautiful though. They match beautifully. Um, yeah. So this I am really really loving. And believe it or not, um, I sit at my desk and I watch Outlander reruns and I work on this. Um, I have my beads right here. Um, and I just throw them in my little, I know I use a wooden dish to put a few, a little bit in, and then I just use a crochet hook. Um, probably, I don't have one of those floss things, but I was thinking I might get one and see if that works quicker with me. I've never knit anything like this with beads before. I've only knit more milk and jewelry with beads up, up till now. So this is like a big adventure for me, right? Um, and those are the only three whips I've been really working on the past uh, few weeks since I last spoke with you. Um, and like I said, it doesn't seem like much, but I have been spending a lot of time on, well, in the past week I've been spending a lot of time, a week and a half, on the Shirley Patton project. Um, for that, um, well, I guess I can get into it. So in case, a little recap. So now I'm going to be talking a lot. Oh, no. Before I talk, before I talk about that whip, uh, let me go into my spinning, which is just a little bit, but I'm showing it anyway because, <laughs> believe it or not, I have done quite a bit of um, spindle spinning. Um, this is fondant fibers fuzzlings. I'm still working on the same fuzzling. These are big fuzzlings. I think they're at least two ounces each. Here's another one. I have a pack of miscellaneous fuzzlings. Here's another one. And then there's this one, which I might um, to apply with this. Um, and here's this one. I was thinking what I do is um, try to make a really thin one and uh, three ply it, um, chain ply it, and um, use this towards a um, sock yarn blanket. I want to make a sock yarn blanket. I want to start one probably next year, maybe before the later in this year. Um, I've really, really wanted to do that. I have so many beautiful scraps of yarn and little amounts of um, hand spun, like little samples of hand spun, and it would be perfect way to use it, and it would be very sentimental, I think, and something that my kids might treasure, and then maybe if I have grandchildren, them. So, I like Molly's name for it, the Cozy Memories blanket, because that's exactly how I think about it. And I really kind of got taken by the notion of it, not just from Molly, who, you know, would talk about how, what each, the memories attached to the yarn that she either got from someone as a gift or she herself had. Um, but also, um, uh, Emily from Fibertown makes, is making one. She uses a lot of her hand spun in there. And I love that the little samples of hand spun are in there. And, uh, I just think that's great. So that's definitely what I'm going to do. I um, So that was spinning. No finished objects. I have some stash enhancement and I have a new tool. So let me talk about my new tool first. I ordered from Grizzly Mountain Arts. Let me cover up my, oh, well, oh, if you see my address. I mean, I don't give a darn if you see my address. Grizzly Mountain Arts Fiber Tools. I saw, I follow them on Facebook. And um, I love it was a uh, it's a supported spindle. I'm sorry about the noise. I'm sorry, I'm making a lot of noise. Really sorry. I didn't think about the paper when I brought it over. It's a supported spindle with a little acorn ball at the bottom. I loved it. I had to have it. So here it is. Isn't it so cute? 
and it has it's protected on the top so the top doesn't snip and yeah I just um I love this I haven't done my supported spindling much lately I wish I'm starting to really miss the spinning I haven't been spinning much at all See if the tab is in here. I mean, the tag is with the details, the weight, and everything. Oh, here it is. Um, and I'm just, I'm trying to devote most of most of my energy is going into the sweater design alone that I'm participating in. So here are the details about the support spindle. It's acorn support. The acorn is myrtle wood. The shaft is Jatoba, which I've never heard of. It's 1.3 ounces, 36 grams. And again, here's a nice close-up look. A nice blonde wood down there with the, uh, the the detail on the top of the acorn is just exquisite. Um, and here's the shaft close-up. Really love it. So I'm actually going to put it right now. I'm going to put it in my spindle holder. I'll show you. Keep it on my desk. I have some of my smaller spindles in here. I already have too many. And if you look behind me, let me see. See back there next? You probably, you can't see it. You probably can barely make it out. In front of the mirror, I have a jar full, full of my bigger spindles. You probably can't make that out well. So I only save the boxes my spindles come in. So if I sell them, I have a nice safe box to ship them in. Problem is, there's so many new spindles that I'm running out of space. So this is going in the spindle box pile, right there on the floor. Um, oh, and I forgot. I usually tie this to the spindle when I'm not using it, and I'll have to do that after the after the podcast next stash enhancement oh and I'm going to do a little giveaway too so stay tuned to the end I won on Hunter Hammerson's violently domestic blog I don't know if you're familiar with the um, designer Hunter Hammerson she's been amazing. I love her socks pattern. She does a lot with um, lacy socks and twisted stitches. I have one of her books. Oh, it's like right, right here in front of my face. Um, she's done the um, self-published books, um, The Knitter's Curiosity Cabinets, different various volumes. Here's one. Right. You can see she does the twisted stitches. I've knit her socks before, and she just recently self-published a book. Oh, Fine Things for Plain Occasions, Hunter Hammerson. So anyway, I follow her blog, and um, she gave away, um, for uh, she published a new sock pattern and gave away a skein of the yarn, and this, I won it. Um, I posted on a comment. And it's Anzula hand-dyed haiku ha ha yarn. It's a very um, light fingering weight, and it's kind of mauve with um, subtle hints of lavender. It kind of goes well with my nail polish, but the yarn is, <clears throat> the colorway is shit take, like the mushrooms. And it is machine washable. So it's 70% super wash merino, 20% bamboo, and 10% nylon. That's a great yarn. I love bamboo. It's so nice and drapey. This will um, most likely go because of the bamboo <coughs> and how well bamboo holds its shape, especially when you use it for lace. It holds the pattern, you know, it holds the blocking. It doesn't like bounce back in. It's great for a shawl. I also got, and this is my favorite so far, I think. I said last week that last week was my favorite. Well, yeah, I think last last one was my favorite. So I actually am going to um, 
say right here that um, if you are a member of the Highland Handmaid's um, Yarn Club, uh, month, uh, Club of the Month, that and you haven't seen yours yet and you want to be surprised, don't look. But here is the monthly. I know I showed <laughs> I showed the previous month, April's last podcast. I usually wait another week um, to show you, but um, I'm going to just show you now. May uh, Actually, I showed you March last podcast, and this is April's. I just got it last week, I think. It is luxurious. I'm in the luxury worsted. Here it is. It is, um, well, you kind of got a little more purple in it, but there, it does have purple in it. And I believe it's like a purple and bronze and brown. I don't know how else to describe it. Although you're seeing it, um, more of the purple come, th come through. There's some more of the, the brown. Um, this is Worsted Weight. 60% merino, 20% yak, and 20% cultivated silk. It's 275 yards. It is, uh, you have no idea how soft this is. It's very squishy. It is, mm. The last two installments were both alpaca. She had to use the same base twice because the base she ordered for March did not come in in time. Um, so we got alpaca twice, and this is oh, I wish I wish the colors from last month were in this base because it's so nice, and I don't know what I'm going to make with it, but this is a good also. Um, a more solid color to use if I'm making something with a more variegated color this would go very well to tame it it's kind of neutral although it does have the purple maroon base there's a lot it would go with so what else did I get I succumbed to little skein in the big woods is currently selling um, a Pippi Long stock stocking kit. I did not go for the bags or any extras. I just did the sock yarn and patterns. And really even the pattern I probably won't make. But I really loved this colorway that was dyed up for this kit by Two Sisters Yarn Company. It's called Pippi Goes to Church. And, uh, goes to Church. Pippi should go to church. Yeah, I'm only kidding. Pippi goes to the circus and look at all those bright, fun colors. This is a self striping sock yarn. I got one to make one pair. I'm not going to make the cat pie ones, um, although um, the pattern. Excuse me, I'm going to bend over. It's in the bottom of the bag. It comes with. comes with the card that has a code for the download the pattern which is by um, um, no, just run knits I can't think of her name her real name um, ba -ba -ba -ba, let's see if it's on the card ba -ba, na -na 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 -na. just run knits come on from the zombie podcast and how come I cannot Megan from Megan just run it <laughs> from um, zombie it's zombie podcast that I watch all the time believe me I do I'm just having a moment it must be the wine with the antibiotics that's what I, I'm on antibiotics for chest infection and I'm drinking just a little wine. I'm not a big drinker, but I just, um, it went well with dinner tonight. Um, so I did, I downloaded the pattern. I probably won't make it, but it's basically um, socks from the toe up with a nice braid up the top to represent Pippi Longstockings braids. And very well written pattern though. I did look at it. I always look at patterns from different designers 
to see to get to see what works you know what I mean to see what works so that if I um, you know because I design some patterns not a lot but I do so see what I and I notice what I like about it I notice what I think I don't like about it what others might not like about it and I just remember these things and I try and uh, just to make my patterns better sometimes so those are my stash enhancements, one of which was a prize. So I'm real excited. And I do have some stuff in the mail. And hopefully that new spindle will encourage me to um, spin a little more. Because I really, really do. I really miss my wheels. I have two wheels. I have an Ashford. No, I have a, oh my god just bought it I want to say it's an Astro but anyway I, I have the Lendrum is my favorite and um, I have the Traveler wheel and um, I just really miss it so I'm going to before I talk about the design along I'm going to talk about my giveaway last um, podcast I showed you um, some yarn that was given to me um, by Debbie um, from Debbie, uh, Color Works by Debbie is the name of her business. Um, and she gave me a skein of a, of, um, a very, I would say it's a lace weight, but it's a very thin, she calls it a fingering weight. If it is, it's very thin. And she did it all in outdoorsy colors and it's called Hudson Valley Knits. Um, 50% Merino tensile blend. Uh, Deborah Tomasello also does a lot of amazing designs. She really cranks them out. She does a lot of color work designs. Um, and now she's putting together her own yarn. And I know that um, Sheila and uh, the girls from... Uh, I cannot remember anything today. I know. I'm so bad. Bad. Um, so it's the Stockman and Zombies, but it's um, the two two ladies, Sheila and Sheila D. Thirty seven and what's the other woman's name? My God, I am like ashamed of myself. It's um, the heart ladies. See how bad I am. Knit one heart two. Wow, I am going to hang my head in shame. So anyway, it's Wendy and Sheila, and um, they gave away a skein of this just recently. I see, I do watch their podcast, and she uh, donated to them. So I don't usually knit with um, yarns this, this thin. I think it's a lace weight, and it's basically um, uh, yarn held double. It's not plied, uh, but it's really interesting, and it's gorgeous, and it's shiny from the tinsel, and the merino tinsel blend is one of my favorites. Tinsel is essentially bamboo. So I'm going to give this away. I'm going to set up a thread, and I want you to go to Deb's website, I'm going to see if it's on here. She does not put it on her. She's silly. I will put a link to her website in the thread. I would ask if you were going to order a skein of her yarn, what colors would you put together? Um, and what would you call the colorway? And her website is... She's got to have it on her pattern. She gave me a pattern. I have a pattern. Colorworksbydebbie.com all right, and I will provide a link in the thread. So there will be a giveaway thread. So now design a long talk. Ooh, I, um, just a little history in case you haven't heard. I participated in, in the Shirley Patton design along. It's the fifth one she's done, and she involved, um, uh, 
knitting guilds across the country. And uh, I'm in, a member of the Westchester Knitting Guild here in New York. And uh, I decided to give it a go. Now, I have knit sweaters. And sometimes I feel like a cheater because I've knit some circular yoke sweaters, some Icelandic yoke sweaters. I've knit, a, I've knit an Alice Starmore Fair Isle sweater. What I, and you might be thinking, wow, but really it's so easy because there's no shaping with those sweaters, right? Um, the, the fair eye one is basically just a box with sleeves and you pick up the sleeves around the hole and you just kind of knit and same with, the uh, um, Icelandic yoke sweater. They're really quite easy. So this is really new to me, knitting a shaped sweater and pay and ha adding features. So Shirley is the most generous person you could ever imagine, and she donates her time to encourage people to uh, design their own garments and mentor them along the way. I feel very honored to be participating in this. So, I have shown my sketch, and I'll show it to you again. And um, following instructions in her book, and I'm also uh, in her craftsy class, here's kind of what it would look like um, using bulky weight yarn. And I can show you, I can show the, uh, um, swatches again. Here's like the cable panel going up the front. Um, here is a... Uh, swatch with the color work. Here is the double moss stitch, which is most of the sweater, and the little one for the um, ribbing. Uh, this is knit with um, Harrisville yarns, um, turb turban. Right. Well, well, it will be knit with turban. Um, Sorry, trying to open this up. It's turban, Harrisville yarn. It's their bulky weight yarn. And um, what we did is we sent our, we had to come up with schematics and we had to do um, a step by step measurement with our increases and decreases spelled out and send it to her. So this is kind of what I sent her. I only sent the front, I didn't send the back. She only asked for the front. And I sent this with my measurements and calculations based on my gauge swatches, right? Um, and I have little pockets. I'm going to have little pockets. I have three fabrics with three different gauges, which kind of made it very complicated. Now, when I say that uh, Shirley Pattern is very detail-oriented and thorough, I am... Not exaggerating. She is incredibly detail oriented, precise, and thorough. So I sent her what I just showed you. And this is what I got back. This with all sorts of notes on it. Um, she basically wrote the pattern for me. She took my um, sketch with my measurements and counts, wrote all over it. Let me just show you. The difference. Mine, hers. <laughs> and my little, this is my measurement summary and stitch count summary. That's what she sent back. Like I said, basically wrote the pattern for me. However, um, my original calculations had some errors, and she told me that I needed to do a schematic, a separate schematic for the back, since the back was not going to have the cable pattern. <coughs> Excuse me, or the or the color work. I wanted to knit it in the round originally. I I had planned to do that, and I would just do the color work all the way around. But um, she said because of the different um, 
stitch counts and row gauges. I could not do that. And even the front, she said I would have to knit in three pieces because the um, cable um, row gauge is much tighter than the moss stitch row gauge. So she said I had to knit the front in three pieces. Plus the pocket is going to be very fiddly, tricky. Um, so she sent it back with a lot of notes. Um, and because of um, inches that were accumulated, because she, she also added that I needed to do two rows of um, uh, to uh, stockinette stitch in between the different fabrics to do my uh, ease into my increases or decreases, whatever the case may be. Um, so it added some length to it. And actually, when she was done checking my work and, and fixing things and, and whatnot, the length would have come to 33 inches. So what I, I decided to do is to become more, I don't know, at ease with what she's, all the steps, or just to become more uh, accomplished to it, I decided to redo it based on um, the new length that I wanted. And so I'm kind of starting with the back. Here's my sketch for the back um, based on my new measurements. So, because I think that's the easiest side since it's all, it's just ribbing and then moss stitch. I just have to do some decreases for the waist and then my arm armhole decreases uh, and neck, of course. And then um, I'll start the front, the three panels for the front. So I will very, very likely, I'm almost done. Uh, I'm following what she did. So it's kind of helping that she wrote it all out for me because I'm go I'm seeing how she very clearly broke my sweater into sections and each section at a time did the formulas said this many stitches spelled it out um, in some cases she she went over in our call we had a call um, a conference call with other people participating and she showed other people's um, uh, templates and I saw how much better other people did so I kind of got ideas on how I can make mine even better so I'm going to redo it. I started writing it out so here is kind of what I've done so far just for the back. Um, let's see it's a lot of work and I just I'm taking my time and I'm just to become more knowledgeable because I would love to design more sweaters, more uh, sweaters that are kind of, you know, something I would like to knit and wear. So it's fun designing your own sweater. And I, I, I'm, if you're serious, don't do it if you're not serious, but if you're serious about wanting to challenge yourself, and don't be afraid to challenge yourself, and don't be afraid of looking inexperienced or, or whatever because we we're all inexperienced when we first start something so <laughs> there were some designs out there from people that have participated in quite a few of her design alongs and their their patterns were astonishingly beautiful and well written and um, just amazing and I this is my first one but I I definitely aspire to become as good as the other ones with practice. And she is so generous with her knowledge and her time. And um, if you are really willing to put the effort into it, she will she will go all out for you. So I highly re recommend signing up for um, one of Shirley's uh, design logs in the future if you've ever wanted to design your own garment. Um, so that's about it for this week. I'm going to cut it short, actually, um, relax and actually do some relaxing knitting and not work on that pattern tonight. That's what I've been mostly doing. So, um, <clears throat> but hopefully <clears throat> because it's a bulky weight, it will go rather quick and hopefully next podcast I will have, 
um, some of it done for you, some of the back done. Um, until then, hopefully I'll see you in a couple more weeks. I got nothing going on, really, so um, should be able to podcast back on schedule now. Um, thanks for your patience, and thanks for joining me, and you all take care. I'll see you soon.